We'll illustrate the rest of this lecture with this example drawn from the AI literature. It's called the Wampus Word, uh, invented by Gregory Yob in 1975. So the Wampus Word is actually uh, a cave of four by four rooms. So we have 16 rooms that are interconnected. And we have an agent that evolves in this environment. And the idea is that um, this room is actually, these rooms actually have some danger. And this idea can be either a beast uh, called the Wampus that would eat anybody who gets into the room. It also has uh, what we call uh, pits. And these pits actually are bottomless. And whoever falls in the pit will be stuck there forever. These are examples of pits and the Wampus. So we have an agent that starts at the room 1-1. One, one, and the mission of the agent is to navigate in this environment or the cave without being eaten or without falling in the pit. There is some reward. It's possible for the agent to discover some gold and get it and get out of the cave. So there are some other components, which is that, um, that help uh, the agent navigate in the, in the, in the cave. Uh, if, we, if the agent is in a room that actually is close to uh, a beast room or bumpus room, this room will be smelly, so it has some stench. Uh, if um, the agent moves to a room in which um, there is some breeze, it means that there is some next room that has some pits, so the pits uh, uh, emit some uh, breeze. So there are some uh, percept that can help the agent navigate without being eaten or fall into uh, the pits. So let's start formalizing the problem of the Wampus word. So we have a four by four grid of rooms in the cave. Uh, squares are called adjacent if they are on the same column or the same line. So anything that's on the diagonal are not. So for example, these two are adjacent and these two are adjacent, right? But these two are not. Okay, so um, squares that are adjacent to a, a Wampus are, uh, have some stench, a smell. So we have a stench here, here, and here because these cells are uh, close to a wampus. Cells that are or rooms that are close to a pit, such as these two, uh, these three rooms here are, have some breeze. This is what the pit emits. Um, and also um, there is some glitter if there is, um, if and only if there is gold in the room. So shooting the wampus uh, with the only available arrow will kill the wampus, in which case it will emit a very big scream that can be heard anywhere in the, in the cave. Also, grabbing picks the gold in the same room, and releasing drops the gold in the same room. All right, so this is the Wampus word. So let's now define the Wampus word in terms of the peace environment uh, criteria. So remember, peace stands for performance, environment, actions, and sensors. For the performance measure, we're going to add the 1,000 points if the uh, agent gets the gold. We're going to subtract the 1,000 points if it is eaten or fell in a pit. Uh, we are going to subtract one point whenever the, ac the agent makes an action, and minus 10 if the agent uses the arrow. The game ends either uh, when the agent dies or comes out with the gold. The environment is a 4x4 four four grid of rooms. The agent starts in the bottom left uh, room, uh, that's the room 1-1, one, one, facing to the right. Locations of the gold and the wampus are chosen randomly uh, with a uniform distribution from all um, uh, squares except the first uh, start square 1-1. One, one. Each square other than the start can be a pit with some probability, uh, which is actually a, a probability of 0.2. So the actuators are left turn, right turn, forward, grab, release, and shoot. And the sensor will be stench if there is an, a wampus in, the adjacent, in one of the adjacent rooms, a breeze if there is a pit, a glitter if there is gold in the room, a bump if the agent is facing a wall and trying to go forward. And a scream is if the wampus is killed. Um, the, this can be represented as a five element list um, in which we have an indicator for each of these sensors. So for example, stench, breeze, non, non, non expresses the fact that there is in the adjacent room uh, a wampus and a pit. So we have to figure out which rooms have actually these uh, two uh, elements. The Wampus word properties uh, are as follows. It's partially observable because the agent can only perceive its closed environment, like the uh, adjacent rooms. It's static because the Wampus and the pits are not moving. It's discrete. We know exactly the actions and the outcomes. Uh, it's single agent. It's deterministic. Um, and uh, finally, it's sequential. Now let's use some informal language using symbols in the grid and do some logical uh, 
reasoning about how the agent should evolve in the case. So initially, the agent is in, uh, these are the first steps. Uh, the agent is in uh, the first room. And we know that uh, by default, this room is safe for the agent. So the room, we are going to add the symbol OK to say that the room is OK to be in. So this room is safe. We're going to use the symbols A for agent, B for breeze, G for glitter or gold, OK if the square or the room is safe, P for pit, S for stench, V for the room has been visited, and W for wampers. All right. So initially, this room is safe, means that there is no, uh, there is nothing in there. But also, uh, by looking into this room, there it, it says that there is no breeze or no um, uh, wampers around. So we could either move to the to the room one two or to the room two one. So suppose we pick uh, to go to the room two one, then the the agent will move uh, in this room here. Uh, this room is visited, right? But this room has actually a breeze, which means that there is potentially a pit here or here. So I'm going to add a question mark to the symbol P to say that, is this a pit? Okay. So here the agent will think and not make any hazardous action. So it needs to really be careful. So what will happen is that uh, the agent will need to come back, to go back to where it came from, and explore maybe the, um, the room one two before moving forward to any of these rooms, given that there is a risk it falls in a pit. So what I just did is um, uh, an inference or a complex process in which I figured out things, which room to go to, where is the gold, where is the wampus, where is the pit, based on different time points, different locations, and all the percept that, are, uh, that are the agent has perceived. So this is uh, this kind of complexity that we want to be able to embed in the logical agents uh, using this kind of some sort of representation to navigate into uh, its environment. So in the rest of this lecture, we'll study how to build logical agents, such as the wampus, that can represent information and draw conclusions uh, to make the agent progress in its environment.